Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants video. The Philadelphia Eagles versus New York Giants preview video that is. Let me just set my mic real quick. You guys might hear that noise. Alright, we should be good. Alright, my bad guys. <laughs> but, it's week 17. It's the end of the football season. At least for us, you know, the regular season. And it feels like this season has passed by quite fast. It feels like it passed by quite fast. I mean, like, literally feels like a couple weeks ago was week one. I was getting ready to see the Giants go 9-7, and seven, hit the Super Bowl run. Obviously, that didn't happen. So many things happened this year. That will definitely go into a recap video. Which, by the way, fun fact for all of you out there who might be newer subscribers, my very first video on YouTube was a recap of the Giants 2018 season. And I will be doing that for the 2019 season, but probably after the Super Bowl and whatnot. And speaking of which, if you guys would like to see me uh, cover some playoff games, anyone in particular, if you'd like to know my opinion on them, who would win and who should win and all that, uh, leave it in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do it. Um, I don't think that I will go out of my way to do any. If uh, if nobody suggests anything, I there's a good chance I might do none and probably just cover the Super Bowl or something. But, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But let's get back to the Giants versus Eagles here. This is a game that I said at the beginning of the season would have playoff implications simply because last based off last year, the winner of the NFC East and the second team the second place team, you know, Cowboys and Eagles weren't exactly, you know, runaways. And I suspected something would happen again, you know, something similar. I did not expect for both teams to be, to be quite frank with y'all, trash. Like both teams are trash. The entire NFC East is trash. You cannot look at this um, division and tell me there's a good team in here. Both t uh, conference leaders or division leaders, yeah, division leaders, my bad. Both of them are really bad and they've severely underachieved um, since the beginning of the season. I never thought it would come to a point where they're both, uh, well not both, but the Eagles are what? They're 8-7 and seven and the Cowboys are 7-8, and eight, right? And basically, all the Eagles need to do to clinch their playoffs, which should have happened weeks ago, you know, because, you know, given the projection of these teams, the Eagles, they need to beat us and the Cowboys need to lose. For the Cowboys to get in, I believe it's the exact opposite. You know, we beat the Eagles, the Cowboys beat the Redskins. What I think is going to happen, this is just what I think is going to happen, is the Eagles are going to beat us and the Cowboys are going to beat Washington. And I don't know what work, what happens then. I'm pretty sure the Eagles still get in because they'll have a better record anyway. But, yeah, man, that's, that's what it's looking like right now. And just a couple things to note. We can beat this Eagles team. The past two times we met up with the Eagles team, we should have beat them. Like, we fully can beat this Eagles team, and it really comes down to Pat Shermer, because that's what happened the past two times. We were up at halftime, Shermer didn't make adjustments, and this is on Betcher too, but I'm putting it on Shermer because it's part of the head coaching responsibilities. One of the many things you need to do as a head coach, not just, you know, get the offense good and ready, get the defense good and ready, is get your other coaches good and ready. Get the players good and ready. Get every single little thing on the team organized, prepared, and ready. And it's not something Shermer has shown. All right, this is something I've stated multiple times. I, I will try not to go in to it, you know, too much because for me, it's going to be beating a dead horse. For me, it's going to be beating a dead horse at that point. But we can very much beat this team. Last time we faced them in week 14, we were up 17 to 3. And as I did my halftime reaction, for those of you that know, I uh, usually, you know, the most uh, frequent way I do my recap slash reaction videos is I react uh, to the first half at halftime, I record that, then I do the second half and the whole game recap after the game is finished. My halftime reaction when we were up 17 to 3, I said I love this, but I hope we don't pull a Pat Shermer and do what we did last year when we were up like 20 to 3 or something crazy like that and then we collapsed in the second half offense couldn't build upon anything defense couldn't defend anything and the eagles came back and win and that's exactly what happened so we've shown the we've shown that we can beat this team but we've only ever played one half against them the past two years all we need to do is build upon that first half 
That's all the Giants need to do with this team. I'm not going to go too in-depth about it because Giants fans know very well what I'm talking about. That includes running Saquon on the ground a lot. It includes high and far passes because the Eagles secondary for the past two years or so have been one of the lesser ones in football. I'm not going to say one of the worst in football because as much as it pains me to say it, they still are you know, a potential playoff team. So their secondary had to play good throughout the year somewhere, but it's one of the lesser secondaries in football and the Giants should be able to take advantage of it. Okay, and they really should do that. So how do you beat this Eagles team? We've done it before. Run the clock out with Saquon, big plays through the air. The defense needs to get stops and more importantly needs to get pressure on Carson Wentz. In the first half of the game of week 14, they got consistent uh, medium pressure on Carson Wentz. I don't know how to describe it. It's not like he was under the duress all the time with the pressure. He, he was just annoyed by it, I guess you could say. And that alone affected him. I mean, that's really all you need to do without pressure anyway. You know, get get into the quarterback's face, get into their mind where they're, you know, they're disrupted and their throws are disrupted, their plays are disrupted, all that. And also our defensive backs, last time we played them, we did have Janoris Jenkins. I cannot recall off the top of my dome if he had um, a great game, a good game, bad game, you know, an average game. Whatever it was, Jenkins will definitely, he won't be missed this game. And I, sh and I will say he shouldn't be missed this game because the Eagles are grounded. I mean, Nelson Aguilar should be out. Zach Ertz should be out. Uh, their, their tackle, Elaine Johnson, should be out. J.J. Arcega, white side, out. On defensive side, Derek Barnett, out. The, their guard, Brandon Brooks, out. Fletcher Cox, out. Jordan Howard, out. Jalen Mills, out. Like, these are the guys all on the injury report. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe a couple of them, you know, are healthy by game time. But, you know, by game day. But on the wide receiver side, you got basically, what is that? Their top two wide receivers and their top three receiving threats, you know, including Zach Ertz, are all out. If our, for some reason, our secondary can't guard that for whatever reason, that would be something worrying to look at, but we shouldn't miss Jenkins this game because they don't have their top three receiving threats. I expect Baker. I expect um, Sam Beal. I expect Julian Love and Corey Ballantyne. I expect all these dudes to have a good game. Because this is the perfect situation you could ask for as a rookie secondary where the other team's receivers are basically all out. And um, I now then, I feel like this is something I should have said at the beginning. For those of you that know I support the tank, you're probably asking yourself, why am I talking in such a way that I want to win and in such a way that I'd be disappointed if we don't win? Well, there's two reasons for that. The first and the main reason, to be honest, is because, well... Unless something crazy happens, we're, we're not getting Chase Young. We're, we're basically out of the running for Chase Young. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. You know, anything could happen on any given Sunday where some weird situation occurs and then the Giants fall back to second overall. Or maybe on draft day, we'll trade up. Whatever the case is, right now, if there are no trades in the draft and whatnot, we're not getting Chase Young. And... I have to come to terms with that. There's nothing I can do about that because there's still a very, very good player on board who we could still get, and that is Andrew Thomas. And Andrew Thomas, after what Daniel Jones showed me on Sunday, I wouldn't mind shoring up that offensive line through the draft, which is probably what we should have done. We tried to do it through free agency, and I'm talking Gettleman error here. Obviously, we tried to do it through the draft in the Reese era, and it didn't work. But we tried to do it through free agency in the Gettleman era, and it hasn't worked out so far. But we did get a good draft pick in Will Hernandez. We did get a good trade for Kevin Zeitler. Why not get a good left tackle in Andrew Thomas and shift Solder over to the right side for the remainder of his contract? And it should be good. Not, should, not saying it will be, but it should be good, right? So I'm coming to terms with that. That's really what I'm looking at right now in terms of the draft and why, you know, why I'm not really in tank mode right now. Okay, for those of you that hated the tank mode and watched my videos, I hope you're happy now. But that's what it is in terms of losing on purpose for me right now. But yeah, back on topic. The defense, 
at least the secondary should have a good game on Sunday. And if they don't, I'll be very worried. I, I shall hope it will be because of some strenuous circumstance. But there's no reason that these guys should struggle. Um, on the pressured, you know, the defensive line and the pass rush side of things, like I said, man, they Lane Johnson and Brandon Books is out. I'm not saying these guys should go out there and get like five sacks, but they they should have good consistent pressure. And I'll repeat that: good consistent pressure, not medium precision pressure or low consistent pressure. No, good consistent pressure. I want to see like two sacks from Marcus Golden, a sack from O'Shane Zimenez. You know what I'm saying? Or at least like attempted sacks like you know plays where you force Wentz out the pocket you almost got him and he threw the ball away like that should be happening this game because their line is weak right now and I would love to see I guess this was the second reason as to why I would love a Giants win I would love to see us knock the Eagles out of the playoffs and to just end this terrible like dominance they've had over us over the past god knows how many years but I saw the stat somewhere of, of the last 11 meetings that we've had with the Eagles the Eagles have won 10 of them. And you could go even farther back than that, but it just seems like they've had our number. And even when we should beat them, like the last time and the time before that, they beat us. It's like a curse or something. And it's, it's way past time that we end it, man. And why not end it with a new regime in DJ and Saquon? And these guys, these guys can do it. I would love to knock the Eagles out of the playoffs. All right, you already know, man. The Eagles are like... The team in the NFC East, the rival that I have, like, the most animosity towards. Just, I do not like the Eagles, man. I hate the Eagles so much. <laughs> oh, man, bro. And Eagles fans can be unsufferable at times, but so can any NFL fans. But, you know, pile on the fact that I hate the team in addition to that, and you, you got, like, a nasty mixture. But I would love to knock the Eagles out of the playoffs. I, I would rather see the Cowboys in the playoffs than the Eagles, man. I really would. That's that's probably a heinous crime for any other uh, NFL fan, but guys, I'm sorry, you don't want the Eagles in the playoffs. I, they they can pull they can pull some BS and something could happen, but I would love to knock them out the playoffs and I would love to end this like this dominance that they've had over us and it would be it would be a great like almost like storybook if it was Saquon and Daniel Jones the two futures, you know what I'm saying the two new leaders of our team that did it for us. And they can, because DJ's got the arm to do it, and Saquon's got the legs to do it. But that's what I got for y'all today. Let me know what you all think. I'll put your comments down below. Like I say, every single video, I love talking with y'all. I love getting into conversations if I can with y'all. Um, let me know, do you want to knock the, the Eagles out? Do you still want to lose? Do you still think there's a way we can do something in the draft for Chase Young? Or are you like me, where you're like, you don't mind getting Andrew Thomas? And would you love to knock the Eagles out of the playoffs? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. You're... Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...